So at this time, we'd like to introduce Hardik Bhatt, the Chief Information Officer for the State of Illinois. Well, thank you very much. Uh, there you go. Thank you very much. Um, so when, I, when, I, when, I, when he saw me, he said, thank you very much for coming uh, for this event. And my reaction to that was, thanks for getting me out here. Because, you know, uh, it's only 10 months since I've been back in the government. And coming out and meeting with people like you, creative folks uh, who are trying to change stuff, it's a breath of fresh air after you spend so much time inside the government and how the government works and the processes and everything. This is actually a good uh, way to see how the real life works, how the real people are. Um, so what I wanted to tell you today was, uh, you know, we are transforming uh, technology uh, at the state uh, in the state of Illinois. And we are, what we are doing is a lot of creativity with a, within a lot of constraints. I mean, as some of you know, many of you actually interact with the government. Some of you have worked for the government. Some of you work with the government right now. Uh, you all have a fondness for government, uh, or at least for the government data that you can get. Uh, or this. The last thing is, again, the other thing I, I want you to think as we go through this is um, each of you, I mean, you want it or not, you will have to interact with the government. I mean, you'll have to pay taxes. You'll have to get your driver's license or get it renewed. Some of you will have to also pay the red light ticket fines or in some cases speeding fines. So whatever, you, whatever we do, each of us, we will have to interact with the governments. People like me will have to be on the other side and make sure that you're getting the right uh, services in the right way, in the right mode, uh, et cetera. So this is less a presentation. I'll just tell you the status of where I took the state IT and where we are trying to take it and how quickly we are trying to get it. But I'm more interested in hearing your ideas and I'm, I'm, I'll tell you very upfront that there are so many constraints that you could have a best idea, but, and I said, that's great, and I'll go try work it out, but I may not be able to do it. So don't just get disappointed if you say something and we cannot make it happen, but just give ideas. And I think some of it will be able to try and make it happen. What I want from you is I want your brains, seriously. <laughs> That's, that's why I'm here. I mean, this is a, a forum, and I go to many of these forums where, where we can get the outside in ideas. We are trying to externalize the state government and get a lot of ideas, uh, not just from the private sector, big companies, but also from the, uh, from the uh, ground level where we can get, because we have serious problems. I mean, this is where we are. Where we are is we spend, we are the third most spend uh, kind of uh, state in technology in the US out of the 50. We spend o over $800 million annually. This is the number from 2014. And we are ranked in the bottom 25%. So here's the spend, here's the outcome. And if you go and try to get a service from the state of Illinois online, you will probably find out why it is like that. I'll give you an example. Uh, and this is basically uh, why we are like this. We have systems that I've found uh, that date back to when I started crawling, <laughs> and they are still there. And we have systems that we kept on investing decade after decade after decade without really focusing on, you know, how do we modernize these things and get into the, you know, 21st century, as they say it. But what that also has done is we have, you know, this is, please don't hack it, but we have security vulnerabilities. I mean, we have, because the systems are sitting in all different, you, I mean, I have people uh, who talk about CICS, COBOL, Nomad, FoxPro, Clipper. I mean, I, I'm sure some of you haven't even, you, you don't know, no, I mean, there, are, there are some people I know exactly. I was like, you know, I, um, I know these languages, so some of you will know those languages. But you basically name it, and I bet you, you'll find that technology in state. So what we are trying to do is, and then that is creating a lot of, a tremendous amount of vulnerability. Uh, out of balance cost structure. I mean, all of these problems, these are just the problems. The outcome of that is the citizens of Illinois are losing out on, on really benefiting from the power of their government. I mean, it's very, how many of you want to make it easier 
to ser get services from the state of Illinois. All of you, all of us. I mean, we want to be able to um, uh, renew our driver's license very quickly. If you are trying to open a business, you want to know exactly every step that you have to go through to open the business, so you can quickly open that. You want all the forms available online, if possible, on your mobile, so you can finish those things. And then once you give that information, you don't want to give that information once again. You want the state to be able to securely keep that, so we can reuse, the, you reuse those things. And you also want to, from us, uh, a renewal notice saying that your license or your inspection is coming in. So you want all of those things that you and us, all of us expect from the private sector, and we are losing out on those things. And that's why we are leading in some of the st stats that we should not be leading people leaving Illinois. We were number one until last year. We just got beat by New Jersey. Well, not to be, not, I'm not very proud of that. The governor is not very proud of that either. Uh, but again, those are the stats that we don't want to be leading. I mean, we have, I'll tell you, we have, you, people, you know ERP, right? Enterprise Resource Planning Systems, Microsoft, Oracle, I mean, not Microsoft, sorry, uh, Oracle and, and PeopleSoft and SAP and others. So when I went in, when, when I got a call from the governor's office, first person I met with was the deputy governor. And the deputy governor said to me that, you know, we don't have an ERP system. We have about 260 different systems that act like ERP. And I'm like, he must be joking. So I went back, I emailed him back to, back, back to him and I said, you must be joking about this, right? He goes, no, I'm serious. We have 263 systems that manage our finances. And when I came in, I found there are 420 systems that manage our HR, finance, grants, procurement. I mean, this is how it takes us nine months after the financial year is over to know, I mean, basically to create that compound annual financial report. Now it takes us seven, seven months to get the budget. That's a different thing. <laughs> but there are fundamental issues that the governor is working on resolving. So, uh, but again, we have these kind of problems that we are, we are facing and we want, the idea is to change that. So what we are working with is empowering Illinois with a citizen-centric or a customer-centric high-value technology. So what we are trying to do in that is literally move extremely fast. And what I want from you is I, are some ideas where we can even pick up more pace. The idea is we want to do this 1974 through 2019 journey, a 45 year journey. I want to do that in four years. So no longer we are running projects for two years, three years. I mean, the, we, we have SAP uh, implementation going on. It's a five year project, but it's not a five year project for me or for anybody else. Everything that we have is broken down into 75 days, 11 weeks. If a president can get elected and then take uh, office within 74 to 77 days between the second Tuesday of, or first Tuesday of November and January 20th, if the president can get ready to run the country, we should be able to get to a milestone in a project uh, by that time. So we are running uh, kind of an agile management of all of these things that we are trying to do at uh, the state of Illinois. We are also more, we are, so we are speedy, but we are also very iterative. Uh, we, are, we give something out to, the, uh, uh, to our customers, and we say, is it good? Not good? We can change it, we can fix it, and we can give you more. We are not waiting for a perfect, uh, perfect thing that comes out. We are also a lot about roughly right. We are not, it's per perfection is the enemy of good. So we are not waiting for a $30 million project at the end of the two years and say, oh, you know what? You asked us for an elephant, and we gave you a buffalo with a trunk. We are not trying to do that. We are trying to change how we are building these stuff. So we are taking, we are working on three things in, in parallel. One is improving the business of technology itself because the way the technology gets done in the, has, has basically been getting done at the state is, is, not, is fundamentally not how you would run technology for today's organizations. It's all broken in silos, so we are, we are changing that. The second one is improving the business of the state using technology. So that's where we'll talk about analytics, we talk about mobility, we talk about cloud, we talk about everything that today's organizations are doing, we are now bringing that into the state. And then the third thing that we are working in parallel is the areas where we can actually leapfrog so many other states. Good thing is in technology, fortunately, unfortunately, we are kind of the third world countries. I mean, you know, we can actually leapfrog like they did in the mobile technology, and we can go ahead of many uh, companies, for example, we had this uh, mainframe-based, three mainframe-based systems for our uh, uh, corrects, Department of Corrections. 
and we moved, well, uh, you like this, we moved to uh, Microsoft a um, Azure platform, uh, Offender 360. We literally leapfrogged the entire client server, web, whatever it is, we moved from mainframe to cloud. Our SAP system, the new ERP system that we are building, is going to be hosted on a private cloud. So we are actually leapfrogging in many areas, and, and it's a great opportunity because we haven't done much in the last few years. So we are trying to move fast and move fast much faster. And then the third area that we are focusing on on leapfrogging is around IoT. I've, I've got a background in uh, IoT. I've worked for Cisco Systems for the past five years. I led the market development for IoT as it came to uh, public sector and real estate. So I'm passionate about I, I'm passionate about using, obviously, making sure that we are not big brothers. Uh, maybe some people know IoT. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Internet of Things. So basically, sensors, videos, analytics, uh, using those kind of technology to make sure the government is efficient, and also uh, looking into uh, economy uh, of Illinois and see how can we improve. That is a partnership with our Department of Commerce to see how we can, we can improve the Internet of Things based economy in um, Illinois. So we also want to look at that. How can we use uh, trans sensors in transportation? And we are already doing very well with our uh, tollways uh, in terms of smart tolling and everything else. Uh, can we use uh, telejustice uh, in our prison system so we don't have to take the inmates out to courts just for a continuation? Uh, so those are kind of things that we are starting to look at where other states are still kind of figuring out. There, we have major policy decisions that we have to make. Uh, so those are the kind of things that we'll be working uh, over the next few years. Uh, the other thing that is, has been missing a lot is uh, internal collaboration. So we have been so long, we've been siloed uh, between, we have 86 different agencies, boards, authorities, and commissions. So we are actually, we can one up GE uh, as in, when, when it comes to conglomerate. Uh, so we have started building a lot of collaboration inside the state where people come together, we have created working groups, Marion leads our enterprise strategy, so we create working groups, from there we create the centers of excellence, and then the people come together, collaborate, work on best practices, and we have uh, Internet of Things Center of Excellence uh, going, we have a data analytics center of excellence running. So we have those collaborative things going on. We are also working uh, aggressively on workforce productivity. We, have been, we are very good in using a 2,000 year old innovation called paper. We still have inspectors going out with, with uh, uh, paper forms and they fill out things and they come back and somebody data enters that technology, uh, that, that uh, inspection into uh, a system. So we are moving very quickly to start giving our, uh, our inspectors um, iPhones and, and Androids and tablets so that we can, they can start. So this is an example where uh, if a DCFS case, uh, case worker goes out to check on a foster kid, Right now, the investigator goes with a paper form, fills out all the case notes, like, what's, what, what was the environment uh, for the kid that the kid is living in? Uh, take pictures of the environment, take pictures of the kid, take the case notes, and then write everything, and then eventually bring that back, and someday it will make, make it into the system. We can simply, with, with $50,000 and internal uh, employee work, we have built this iPhone-based system that we are now piloting in this month, February, and then we'll roll it out across uh, DCFS where you know, they can take it on an iPhone. They can go there, take all the case notes, they can take the picture, and everything sh uh, ships back. I mean, this is 2016. I mean, you know, we all do this. We have been doing this for so many years. So we are now moving in that area also. But the biggest area that you know, we really can do a lot is the data analytics area. We sit on petabytes of data. We have, it, just in healthcare and human services, uh, so we are health and human services spend is a little bit over half of our total budget. That's what we spend. About 25% of people in Illinois are utilizing our, uh, health and, uh, are us utilizing our healthcare systems. So there is a huge population that we serve through our healthcare and human services, but all of that data sits in 60, 65 different systems. There is no way I can say this John Smith is that same John Smith, same John A. Smith, same, same there is no way we can compare and contrast all those. So now, going back to DCFS again, they get a call that this particular kid is having some trouble. So what they have to first do is they need to take that name, they have to match it with all of the different systems. So what they basically have to do is, don't try to read this, uh, this is how, these are three different forms, but what they have to do is they have to go through 10 different 
mainframe based systems, all different green screens, they search all of these things, they print out those things, they put them on a conference room table, and then they start kind of marking these things. Oh, this is uh, that guy's, uh, this person is that guy's ex-wife. Oh, by the way, that's another ex-wife. They live in two different addresses. Those are two kids of those two people or that. It takes them days to figure out, like figuring out what kind of relationships this person has with who, where do they live, what kind of assistance do they get from the state, and then they can go out and investigate on that particular case. So what we are doing for them now is simply building a 360 degree view of a customer. So when you get a call, you get the name, and then we, based on certain criteria, we can actually go back and within, t from 10 different systems, we can come back and bring that and then show that view to the investigator so within seconds the investigator can know what are the different relationships. Now the question they can ask is instead of spending days on figuring out the data, now they can focus on, by the way, you know, I came to your place, the electricity is out, but I just saw that you get 350 degree from SNAP and you get a $400 tenth benefit from the state. Where is that $750? Why is this foster kid living without electricity? I mean, those are the questions that we really want to, ha want to have them focus on investigation as opposed to trying to figure out what do they need to investigate. And that's where we are, we are looking at a lot of, so the thing is, again, technology is not going to be the tail that's going to wag the dog. We are going to have the business people tell us what are those tough questions that you are trying to answer. And then we take those questions and then we go back and we analyze that using the data. So that's why we need that chief data officer. That's why we are also going to hire a chief data scientist. That's why we are building a full-fledged data science practice. Because, you know, for all of the work that we do within health and human services, and whatever touches Medicaid, we get 90% funding from the federal government. I mean, for only 10% of Illinois taxpayer money, we can get a lot of big problems. It's, again, as I said, over 50% of our t budget or spend comes from that. So we are going to focus heavily on how can we start kind of improving the customer service, improving efficiency of our people that are working on that. So we'll, we'll, we are still looking for more people. So as you kind of start thinking about things, you know, reach out to us. Uh, there'll be more uh, announcements that we'll make around building our data science practice. And as I said, I'm, we are externalizing the enterprise a lot. So we have built advisory boards. We are reaching out to people uh, in the valley uh, to start giving us ideas. We are reaching out to the l large corporations here. Uh, Marion's leading that, that work also. We are building uh, sub, uh, subcommittees focused on enterprise security because I don't, I don't, as I said, we want to do this 45 year journey in four years. We don't have time to learn. We don't have the luxury of learn, the time to learn. So we want to bag, borrow, and steal. I was just going to say steel, but <laughs> bag, borrow, and steel. Uh, so we are, we are learning, we are bringing, so for example, we went to Indiana, and Indiana is supposedly one of the leading states after Chicago. Chicago is a leading in, in analytics. But in, in terms of the states, Indiana is one of the leading states in how to use data analytics. One of, and they've been at it for the last three years. One of the lessons learned that they gave me, they said, you know what, if we are to restart this thing, we would have done something different. And I said, what is it? And they said, we spent 18 months in building data sharing agreements between uh, the IT department and the various departments that, are, that keep the data. Because they are the owners, IT is the custodian, and we cannot just start doing whatever we want to do with the data. And it took us 18 months. If we had to restart, we would do an enterprise data sharing agreement so that all of the uh, parties are signing one agreement. Perfect, good. We came back. And we started working on that. It's, we started in October uh, for an enterprise data sharing agreement. We'll have that in place in March. So five months. So I'm, I could save 13 months. In, so I'm trying to learn so that fast and we can get those things done so we can move fast. Again, I'm very serious about making this 45 year journey in four years because if we don't do that, I mean, you know what's, I mean, everybody, people are leaving the state, businesses are leaving, jobs are leaving. I'm not a politician. I mean, I worked for, and I told this to governor also, is that I worked for Mayor Daley. I was a CIO for the city of Chicago, Democratic mayor. I'm working for Governor Rauner, Republican governor. Technology, as all of you can vouch for, is nonpartisan. Technology is a politi political. Technology is what actually changes how we live. So one of the big steps that the governor took a couple of weeks ago was, as I talk, told you about all of the silos that we have, you know, 86 different silos. 
we actually brought all of them together. And we created, the first time in the history of the state of Illinois, we created a department of technology. And we added to that the charter for innovation. So now we are, like the city, we are the department of, we have the department of innovation and technology, and we brought all of these resources together. We added one more thing to that, where we actually made the state CIO also the steward of data. So now we'll be able to do a lot more with the data. Obviously, as I again said, IT is a custodian of data. Departments are the owners of data. So we are going to always go to them and make sure that they are comfortable with what we can share. One of the things that I have not been able to work so much yet, because you know how many problems we have. I have to work on, focus on those things. One of the, I told you this in the morning, uh, that one of the things I have not been able to focus a lot, and that's why I need a CDO to start focusing on that, is improve our uh, presence in open data. I mean, we have, I have not even touched that portal uh, since I started working at the state for the last 10 months. But once the CDO comes on board, one of the charters that the CDO will have will be to improve our presence on the open data portal. So I firmly believe this, you know, technology is going to be the engine that will help governor and this administration and all of us to bring Illinois back, make us competitive once more, make us attractive once more. And for that, what I need is your brain. <laughs> Thank you. Questions, ideas? What's the center of excellence? You talked about how you were building collaboration amongst sure. departments, mm -hmm. and there was a center of excellence that was yep. created. So what is that? Why don't I let Marion answer that question? Sure. Um, the center of excellence has a lot of different things, but in our context, it's a virtual team that comes together uh, to, uh, to share best practices, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, the data analytics uh, center of excellence. Mm -hmm. There are people sprinkled all around the state of Illinois doing analytic stuff, but they don't talk to each other. They don't mentor each other. They don't leverage each other's contracts and licensing or any of that. So bringing those people together to do that is a center of excellence. So it's people who share best practices, any kind of asset to move their expertise forward. They all have their own projects that they work on, uh, but mostly they work on, in silos. So we bring them together in the center of excellence so that they can share best practices, what they're doing. They can learn from one another. They can also leverage contracts. I mean, never heard of that, right? Build versus buy strategy. So um, that's that's a good question. So <laughs> um, we have we have a, a, a great workforce of about seventeen hundred technology employees at the state, uh, and so our our focus is a lot more going to be building. So we want our people to be building uh, a lot of stuff that we that we want to get built. Uh, we also want new more people to come in to the state and build whereas on the other hand so that's that's one side of it whereas if we we are talking about large systems like uh, sap implementation that's a buy because that's uh, we, there is a time constraint to that there is uh, it's so huge uh, there is no way i can train uh, all the employees to start kind of hit the ground running so for that i need people uh, to, to for that the buy buy part would come in but we are trying to be very uh, 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 much better planned and, and, and organized in the buy part because we've been very chaotic over the last few, few years on, on the buy side of it. Uh, but the build side, we are going to focus a lot on not just uh, uh, training our people but also trying to bring new people in who can help us build this stuff. That's why we are building our data analytics practice inside the state. Definitely. So uh, our workforce right now is 94% unionized, um, and there are certain. And I, I'm, I'm, I, I'll tell you, I'm not that great with the union kind of how the rules works and how the bargaining uh, specific uh, uh, articles of the contract work. Uh, but basically, uh, we can easily hire at the top. Uh, we can also get the, the interns in, uh, and then there are different ways where we can hire in the middle. Uh, in the middle is the toughest part to hire because. Uh, through the union rules that we have, uh, if there is a vacancy uh, by seniority, the, a union member has the first uh, chance to fill that position. If that does not get filled, we have to open uh, the job posting. Um, 
<laughs> we have to open the job, job posting. And then uh, there is something called um, absolute uh, uh, veterans preference. Uh, so if there is a veteran who has applied for that position, then the, the veteran gets uh, the first priority to that. So th there are certain uh, hiring rules that make it difficult. But you know what? That's OK. It, if it is difficult, that's why I'm here. You know, we'll try to figure out how can we get the best and the brightest and at the same time give our own people more opportunities. As you're building new systems, what's your strategy for bringing data forward? Do you, uh, do you uh, uh, make it static and then, and then publish it? Or uh, uh, do you try to upgrade and bring the data with you? Uh, when you build a new system or when you upgrade an existing system? No, but we still need to get the data out from where it is into the new system. So for example, SAP will, will impact 300 out of 420 systems that currently manage <coughs> finance procurement. So we need to get that data out of. So we'll basically retire 300 technologies, but we'll bring that data into the newer technology. Uh, I don't want to be ahead of the governor's announcement, but yes, I, 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 I won't go into specifics, but yes, that's the intention. Uh, while we focus on, on product, making our workforce productive with mobile tools, we also want to give these citizens uh, potential mobile channels that they can interact with this uh, state government. Yep. And how is that going? Like, what are your strategies? Right. So I think that's, that's a great question. Uh, and I, I don't have an answer, but people are motivated. For the last 10 months, I've seen, at least in the last seven months, you would say, I'm getting so many uh, uh, reach outs from people that they want to be part of the team. Because from inside, from inside and outside. I mean, uh, you, uh, the, 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 the quality of resumes I've received for the chief data officer <laughs> position, it's just amazing. I want to get all of them. So, I mean, it's just amazing quality of resumes we have received. My chief technology officer that we hired from the private sector, 30 years of no experience in government. And he is, uh, he's doing great. You, this is your first job in the government, Marion? Yes. Right? So, we are getting a tremendous response. I think it has to do a lot of, to do a, with a lot of things. One, you have, uh, you have a governor who comes from the business background, who understands. So, every time I've seen him, he basically says, mm -hmm that it tell, and this is his line. I mean, this is his line. Technology will be the engine that will bring back. It, it, it's basically, he gets what technology is. I think for the first time, technology has a seat at the boardroom in the state of Illinois. And that's a huge a difference. It is not, no longer an afterthought. It's basically, we are, when we sit down uh, in the governor's office to think about a major initiative or think about a major problem, I'm sitting right there. I am sitting with the chief operating officer and deputy governor and general counsel and others, and we are looking at this problem, and technology is the first. So I think, I, 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 that's why I'm saying, it's very hard to put a finger on exactly what it is that, that we are seeing, why it is changing, but it is, it is a, and again, the announcement that the governor made, gover, governor made two uh, weeks ago about creating this innovation and technology department what is, Same. I mean, it's same thing. So I've uh, again, I've I've got uh, a lot of people from other departments already on my leadership team. We also have, for example, my CISO uh, is from a, another department. He he's been with the state government for 35 years. He's now and he's tremendous. Mm -hmm. He's fantastic. Kirk Lonbaum is our chief information security officer. Mm -hmm. My uh, chief of uh, the the guy who runs transformation. Uh, that is basically the sort of consolidation reorganization. He's an internal guy. So we have a lot of internal people that have also stepped up. Because what is, I mean, to you, I told at the beginning that you know, give me ideas, but don't expect me to execute all of those. I said the exact same thing to internal people. I said, give me ideas. Don't expect me to implement all of those. Those that I can do within the constraints that we have, I promise I will. And I have. We have. 
And that's kind of, you know, once they're seeing that, you know, their thoughts are getting implemented. So I, as I said, it's very hard to put a finger on it, but it's happening. It's harder. It's harder to figure out. Yeah. So I'll, I'll tell you, so we get to every two months we gather all the CIOs from all the agencies and about 100 people get together. And we, st and in June when we got them together first time, we created working groups and we ended up creating 11 working groups. And then we added a couple more afterwards. And the meeting that we had in February, the first week of Feb, uh, no, in, in January, uh, we actually asked them to stand up. It's like, who, uh, how, how many of you are in a working group? How many of you are in a center of excellence? And pretty much everyone except one person, <laughs> except one guy, yeah, except one guy stood up. So they're all now working together. So while they have the responsibility of their own agency, they also have enterprise responsibility. That never happened in the state before. Question, yeah. So uh, procurement, whatever, I mean, people say procurement is difficult in the state. I mean, there's lots of things that, that have been said about. And that always, I mean, the government, people say procurement is very slow. So uh, it's not the fault of procurement department or whoever is running procurement. Majority of the time that gets spent on procurement is spent by the buying department. Because the buying department is the one who's writing the RFP. The buying department is the one who is evaluating the responses and negotiating and awarding the contract and getting them on board. The procurement itself is four to six weeks. So all the bad rap that the procurement gets, actually it's the buying departments that are delaying everything. Now, there are some peculiarities in state uh, procurement rules that we are trying to figure out how can we, we can improve. Uh, but no, it's build versus buy is not, uh, the build versus buy strategy is more so that we have invested so much in our employees. We want to make sure that we give them opportunity to do what they are here to do because they are all there for a purpose. They are all there for public service. So we want to give them opportunity to really shine and build. And then if that doesn't work out, then we always have the buy option. There was a, I saw somebody had a question. Oh yeah. Sure. So we are already working with Shaping Hall, uh, and we are, yeah, and we are also, uh, we are also uh, building partnership with uh, the IIT Institute of Design. So we are looking at uh, look at the end-to-end -end processes, and then using design methodology to improve those processes. Uh, we are we are having two teams right now working on one on the DCFS, the child uh, foster foster kid uh, program, and then one on creating a one-stop uh, business kind of portal or business, uh, uh, one-stop shop for business. Uh, we are also building partnerships with uh, Northwestern data analytics team. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity around building partnership and inside, outside in help that we can leverage uh, for analytics because we haven't built that practice in-house yet. So as, I, as we start focusing more on open data and start putting more data up, I really want the community to take it up and start building useful applications for uh, our, our taxpayers for the, for the citizens and businesses. But at the same time, uh, we want to, I mean, if you have a great idea that you can, you think you can come in and, and help us build that, you know, again, within the constraints, we have unions, we have procurement rules and guidelines that we have to follow. But if we can overcome those things, we'll, we'll be more than happy to entertain those things that we can build from here. Excellent. I think that great. concludes Excellent. that. Thank, Thank you very much. You.